NASCAR's best hit the track for the first time this season in a preseason exhibition race, better known as The Clash. It was at the LA Memorial Coliseum for the second year in a row, and I have to say this year was, I don't know, a letdown. It was not a great product. We'll talk about it all coming up. Wins gonna punch his ticket to the championship four. Got him this time. Oh, he turned it. No. Big room. Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt. There's another seven-time champ. Heard by Legato. Maybe no. Kenza takes him out. Look, using lessons learned from his father to go from sixth to first and score the victory in the Pepsi 400. 20 years of trying. 20 years of frustration. Three flags in the air. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Cameron Simpson and welcome back NASCAR fans. Welcome back to the NASCAR portion of coverage on our channel. NASCAR's Daytona 500 is coming up. We are locked and loaded and ready for the NASCAR season and uh, NASCAR best hit the track this weekend. So for NASCAR fans, welcome. If you're new here and we're like, I was just watching you do football. Why are we doing NASCAR all of a sudden? Well, that's what we do here. Uh, NASCAR has been around for quite a while on this YouTube page. It's actually how we got our start, and we'll continue to roll into On the Pedal Season 3, starting right now. All right, let's talk about the clash at the Coliseum and um, my grievances with it. Number one, it's way too small. <laughs> I mean, I think that was really put on display today. That track is very small. It's hard to pass. It's hard to do anything in. You have to bump someone out to make a pass. And the whole point is obviously that. They want, NASCAR wants that to be showcased, that they want the bump and run to be the big thing. NASCAR wants drivers to have to make other drivers mad. It's way too easy to turn someone at this track and just blame it on the track. And NASCAR, in doing this, create sometimes a great product like we saw in the heat races where I thought it was very exciting. I liked the heat races all in all and then kind of a just blah product that we saw in the second half of yesterday's race. I mean we saw cars wreck every lap for most of the second start of the second half of that race. The final portions of the final quarter of the race was a little better but there's still cars absolutely wrecking each other for no reason. It was just a disaster, and personally, I'm just not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of just wreck and wreck and wreck. It's not racing, it's wrecking, and I don't really like when that happens. I'm not a fan of us going out there and just wrecking cars like they don't matter, um, like the cars have no meaning to them, so <coughs> I don't like that. I know some people out there... They, they love that stuff, but it's just not my cup of tea, and I feel like NASCAR's trying to go that way. It's just too bad. It's just, it's not great. And if you get a lead, you're not going to get it taken away from you most times. I think there's three lead changes in today's race. It was with 20-something cars in it. It was just, it was tough to watch the second half. The first half was fine. It just, I don't know. It doesn't seem to appeal to me. It's just too small of a racetrack, and part of me misses the whole... Daytona, but you have to look at this race with an open mind and say, all right, this is something different. NASCAR's trying to get away from doing the clash at Daytona. Even though we've done that for so long, I get, I mean, it does make sense. All right, let's do a preseason event somewhere else, try to draw in the new fans, and try to draw in the casual fans. And by doing so, let's have big performances. Let's have things like that happen. And sure, it works. All right, I'm sure you're drawing in some fans, but that place sure didn't look packed to me. It sure didn't look like that Coliseum was packed with people. It, it looked quite underwhelming at times looking at it. There was a lot of empty seats. And if you were there, let me know. Maybe I'm wrong. But from watching on TV, it looked like there was a lot of empty seats. There wasn't a lot of people wanting to watch this race. I get it. I'm being a negative Nelly right now talking about how bad this race, at the end of this race was. I'm not saying I didn't 100% enjoy it, but when there's caution after caution, I just get uninterested in it, and I'm just like, wow, this is slow, this is boring, and bleh. Um, <clears throat> so that's my quick thoughts, I guess, on the whole experience as a whole. There's talks about this race becoming a full-on uh, regular season points race. 
because next year Auto Club's getting the boot, and there's conversations about making this race a full-timer. I think that that would be a horrible idea. I think it would be a horrible idea to make this a full-time race. Um, I just don't think it's, 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 it's good enough to be that. So that's my opinion on it. Um, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. I think it's just too easy for that. There's some drivers that had really good days today, though, and let's take a look at the finishing results. Martin Church Jr. wins the clash after not winning a singular, single race all last season. He goes out and wins the clash tonight. And then, second and third, RCR teammates, Austin Dillon and Kyle Busch, making his premiere in that eight car. Gotta say, as a Kyle Busch fan, love seeing that eight car out on the track. I, I, I'm, I'm jumping on board. I'm jumping on board with this. Uh, and obviously, RCR flexing their muscles, saying, we're going to be a threat this year. And they were both fast. They both stepped up. So I, I do expect them both to be very good. Will they be amazing? I don't know. But I, I would expect those two guys to not be bad. Let's just say that. I would expect them to have good enough cars to contend almost every single week. So I, I would be just I would keep an eye out. I would keep an eye out on those two. Alex Bowman, Kyle Larson, two Hendrick guys. Tyler Reddick, his first time in that 45, finished sixth. Ryan Priest, first time in 41, seventh. Chastain, who got himself in trouble again, ran into somebody. Uh, Denny Hamlin in ninth. William Byron, Justin Haley, Kevin Harvick, who had an incredible finish in the heat race if you missed it. Uh, Christopher Bell in 13th. Noah Grax in 14th. And Chase Briscoe in 15th. So, when we think about these guys, I gotta say though, RCR showing pretty good stuff. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to watch for more of that. Uh, who else looked good? The rookie looks okay. Um, who struggled? Who you know? Joey Logano struggled all weekend. He kind of got into it with um, uh, Kyle Busch there, but I, I don't think he meant anything by it. The only other incident that comes to mind from this race would be Martin Truex and Austin Dillon. They had a slight run in that ruffled some feathers, I guess, but. It looks like both sides are okay now, but definitely a little incident there. I uh, Bubba Wallace has all rights to be angry about that, but I think it was kind of like a duo thing on that case. Anyway, let's put this on Hit the Gas or Hit the Brakes for the first time this season. It's return, the Hit the Gas or Hit the Brakes um, thing. Uh, let's say the Clash of the Coliseum last year was a lot better than the Clash of the Coliseum this year. This year... A lot of cautions in the second half of that race. It was at times tough to watch, at times almost unbearable for that last half. I almost shut it off. I'm glad I didn't because the finish was pretty exciting. But um, I will say that this race is going to hit, hit the brakes. I'm going to hit C minus today. Uh, just not good enough to hit the gas. But remember, it's still the preseason, so there's plenty of time for us to turn that around for the date, Tone of 500. Anyway, until the next time, my name is Cameron Simpson. See you in the next one. Peace out.